we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. <laughs> we're rolling. Okay, yeah, I'm John Seabrook. I'm a staff writer at The New Yorker, and I'm the author of The Song Machine. The whole book started when my son moved into the front seat of the car, reprogrammed the radio, and changed my classic rock stations to pop stations. The song that really started this whole pop era that we're in now is Since You've Been Gone, the 2004 song by Kelly Clarkson. It was written by Max Martin and uh, his protege at the time, Dr. Luke. They were listening to Maps by Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs, and they, Max was saying, I want, really want an indie sound like this. Wouldn't it be great if we could put like a really big chorus on this song? That song uh, just not only created Kelly Clarkson, but really created a template for what, you know, Pink and Katy Perry and a number of other sort of rock pop artists followed. I have read a lot of musical history and the Brill Building era is of particular interest to me uh, because, you know, characters like Carole King. Carole King uh, was such a, a great songwriter and the songs that I really loved was, for example, I, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow is a great Carole King song that beautiful melody, progressive melody, not a hook-based song, but a lovely lilting melody that flows through the whole song. And then we, the Beatles suddenly showed up on our shores and we were into this whole other era where the artists and the bands wrote their own material and, that, and rock and the ethics and the aesthetics of rock were very much invested in, in that idea of the singer-songwriter. And, and then that era kind of came to an end and, and now we're back in this Brill Building-like era, which is the subject of my book. There was two music projects I was working on at the same time. One was the book, and that took about four years. And then the other was this band that was slowly forming at the same time, which is the Sequoias. It's a literary band, but uh, I think for all of us, it's a really great opportunity to sort of get out from behind the desk, stand up on stage and perform, which is something you almost never get a chance to do as a writer. So we ready? Okay, let's do it. David? Moving on. Just an old Big Daddy. Big Daddy. I could hear you a lot better. Couldn't you? Couldn't you hear Charlie? Yeah, he's cracked up but I could hear you more. I think the bass has... What a bunch of bullshit. He doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> no, I'm a Listen very expert that. musical person. Listen, Listen There's not that. too many people that have... He yeah. couldn't hear the bass. All right, see you. Or 6 Yeah. Oh, we're going to make It's another world out there. So what I do when I work is I come in, uh, I put on my headphones, I have my work music file, which is essentially just like music that I like to listen to. And okay, so the kind of music that works well for, for writing is fairly rhythmic pop. And this is a great example of it. We can find our desires. Ooh. What I love about Drake is like he takes things like, you know. Oh, even though I'm like a grown man and uh, I really don't need to like worry about whether people think I'm a loser or a psycho, but this is a great song. Like I was even thinking of like kind of playing this song when we took the stage and kind of mouthing like, fuck all of you said I was a loser, said I was a psycho, because those emotions are emotions that are always with you, even though maybe they were only appropriate when, when you were 16 years old. They don't go away.